Tiananmen Square is so underreported there where you are to the point where journalists couldn't even get close to Tiananmen Square without being pushed away. Absolutely. Uh, if I uh, wanted to go there right now, it would be almost impossible because it's one of the most heavily policed and monitored uh, public spaces in the world. And actually, a number of international uh, media outlets have tried to do exactly that this Tuesday and on Monday and were prevented from doing so uh, at the checkpoints by uh, security forces uh, upon seeing uh, their passports because you have to present your, pa your passport when you go to the square and that's when they see that you have a journalist visa and that's when they start uh, asking questions. And that kind of tre treatment really uh, really mirrors uh, how the treatment of the June 4th uh, uh, incident and massacre and crackdown uh, in general here in China. You can only uh, talk about what happened that night uh, 30 years ago in whispered tones looking over your shoulder uh, because it's really a taboo subject. Um, indeed, it's any reference to the incident is uh, censored on the media, on uh, social media posts or uh, on traditional media as well. Uh, really, this is the, 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 the this is explains the, la the sort of lack of awareness about what happened 30 years ago uh, here in China. The younger generations have not been uh, as exposed to what happened uh, 30 years ago, to the millions of people who went down in the streets, protested, demanding a, a, a democratic reform, a demanding an end to corruption. Uh, and that was all an intentional uh, campaign, propaganda campaign by the government. So, Charles, what is the official version there? What do Chinese officials say about what happened at Tiananmen Square 30 years ago? Well, uh, actually, in quite in a quite a rare public address, the uh, Minister of Defense spoke to international media this Saturday and said that he thought that the crackdown of the protesters uh, that night, 30 years ago, was the correct decision uh, because it guaranteed stability. And uh, and that uh, message, that discourse, was echoed this Monday by, in an op-ed in the Global Times, which is basically the English language uh, mouthpiece uh, for the Communist Party, uh, where they said that the June 4th incident, as, as it is known is basically immunized China to political turmoil. Uh, because at that point in time, in 1989, uh, the China's biggest threat, biggest fear, was to see uh, the country go down the same way that uh, the U.S., uh, that the former uh, Soviet Union did, or that before the ex-Yugoslavia did, that it would sort of start dissolving uh, like a lot of former communist countries. So basically, by cracking down on this protest, they sent a strong signal saying that they were not deviate from their trajectory and that they would uh, continue uh, with their uh, economic model. And basically now the social contract they established with the Chinese people after that was that, sure, you'll have less freedom, but we will guarantee you uh, more wealth, more material comfort. And if you look at uh, China's uh, development over the last 30 years, that's what happened. Hundreds of millions of people have been lifted from poverty. Now, will it continue happening? Will there be more calls for democracy if there's an economic slowdown? Well, that's what we're going to find out in the next uh, few, in the next decade, really, as China's economy is slowing down. Charles, thanks for that, Charles.